What's up guys, I'm Ari Rochelle and this is Nuggets of Truth. For the first time in my life, I have to say, I don't think I went deep enough in my first video. About two years ago, we did a video on the spirit of prophecy, which is under our Nuggets of Truth category. And in that video, I stated that the spirit of prophecy is rooted in who Jesus is and all prophecies were and still are given to either point to Jesus's life, death, resurrection, and or kingdom. And you know, I don't disagree with this statement. I just don't think I went deep enough, which is really weird for me. So let's just get into this. We, we get the term spirit of prophecy from Revelation chapter 19, verse 10, which says, Then I fell down at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, you, should, you must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus because Jesus is the word of God. All right, let's lay a quick foundation. Throughout scripture, we read that Jesus is the word of God. And I think that John chapter one is one of the best for laying this foundation. But we're not going to read the full chapter, just the parts that lay down the foundation to what we're talking about. But I encourage all of you to read the entire chapter on your own so that you know nothing was being taken out of context. So John chapter one, verse one through five. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome. So we have the word of God that is God and was in the beginning with God. In fact, John takes it a step further and says that all things were made through him and nothing was made without him. So the word of God has to be one of the members of the Trinity. Let's keep reading verses 14 through 18. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory as the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks before me because he was before me. For from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. The only member of the Trinity that became flesh and dwelt among us was Jesus, the Son of God. If that's not enough, John clarifies that he, the Word of God, the only Son from the Father, gave us grace upon grace, and that person was Jesus. John leaves no room for doubt. But if that's not enough, I encourage you to check out our video, Who or What is the Word of God, which is under our Nuggets of Truth category. In that video, we dissect this verse along with several other verses in scripture in order to prove that Jesus is in fact the Word of God. So feel free to check that video out after this one. So what does Jesus being the Word of God have to do with the spirit of prophecy? Well, what is prophecy? I believe defining prophecy needs an entire video on its own, but I believe a good solid definition of prophecy is hearing a word from God and proclaiming it. I think there's more to prophecy, but I think this is a good foundation for its definition. So with that in mind, from whom do we get prophecies? Well, if we go back to the Old Testament, we find that the prophets always heard from the word of the Lord. From the very beginning before Abraham's name was even changed, the first promise given to him was from the word of the Lord, recorded in Genesis chapter 15. The chapter even starts out with, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. Throughout the Old Testament, we see the same pattern. Jeremiah 1.1 the words of Jeremiah, the son of Helkiah, one of the priests who were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the 13th year of his reign. Joel chapter 1, 1. The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Bethuel. And ending in the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 1, verse 1, the oracle of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. The prophets were each visited and given their prophecies by the word of the Lord. And in those 
rare occasions when a promise comes from someone other than the word of the Lord, it's from the angel of the Lord, such as the birth of Samson foretold in Judges chapter 13. And I'm not going to read the full chapter, but again, I encourage you all to read it for yourselves to see if what I'm saying is true. Don't just take my word for it. Test it. Be like the Bereans who tested Paul. So if Paul needed to be tested, I for sure need to be tested. So Judges chapter 13 verses 2 through 5. There is a certain man of Zorah of the tribe of the Danites whose name was Manoah. And his wife was barren and had no children. And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Behold, you are barren and have not born children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Therefore, be careful and drink no wine or strong drink and eat nothing unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. No razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb. And he shall be begin to save Israel from the hand of the Philistines. And even in these occasions, it's still by Jesus that we get our prophecies, that we get our promises, for he is the angel of the Lord. And now, before you feel like I just, you know, committed blasphemy to lower Jesus to the level of angels, check out our videos, the angel of the Lord, which is under our nuggets of truth category, and what are angels, which is under our too deep category. And in these videos, we explained how Jesus is the angel of the Lord and what that actually means. And before you think that I'm just talking foolishness or that I'm just blaspheming up a storm over here, let's read the call of Moses real quick, because most of us think that God the Father called Moses out of the burning bush, but that's not what Exodus records. Exodus chapter three, verses one through who says, Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he, he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. It was the angel of the Lord who came to Moses and called him. It was the angel of the Lord that told Moses to tell those who asked who sent him that I am has sent him. So with that said, who then is the angel of the Lord? And why didn't the word of the Lord come to them to tell them of what was to come? As I stated earlier, the angel of the Lord is Jesus, which we explain and go really deep into that in our video, The Angel of the Lord, which again is under our Nuggets of Truth category. So to answer the second question, I believe would take a whole new video on its own, as stated earlier, because I think it has to do with what a prophet and a prophecy truly are, which we don't really have time to get into in this video. So getting back to our topic of the spirit of prophecy, if we go forward to the book of Hebrews, it states that long ago at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. Now, this is how the book of Hebrews starts. This is Hebrews chapter one, verse one. Now, what this is saying is that God didn't speak to everyone. In fact, God didn't speak all the time. There were times when the word of the Lord was rare, such as during the time of Eli, which is recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. There was even 400 years of silence. But when the day of Pentecost came, which is recorded in Acts chapter 2, God poured out his spirit on all flesh, fulfilling Joel's prophecy recording in Joel chapter 2. No longer does God only speak to his people through the prophets, but now he speaks to all of his people through his son Jesus because Jesus is the one mediator between God and man, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. So does that mean that we no longer have prophecies today? Of course not. We still have prophecies today. Otherwise, we would have to get rid of any prophecy written after the ascension of Jesus, which is every prophecy recorded in the New Testament that wasn't spoken from Jesus himself. So with that said, prophecy hasn't disappeared. Prophecy is still here. The only difference is that the prophets are not the only ones who can hear from God and commune with him. Now, let's see what God says about his word, because this was 
This will determine how his word is fulfilled. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. According to God himself, he watches over his word to make sure it does what he has sent it out to do. This isn't the only time that he says this. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 10 through 11. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. When God speaks the word of the Lord, Jesus is sent out and he doesn't return to God void and empty. He doesn't return until he has completed all that he has been sent out to do. This is why the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. A testimony is what you have done. If Jesus is the word of the Lord and he not only brings forth the prophecy, but also fulfills the prophecy, then that would be his testimony. So it's not that all prophecies from God point back to Jesus. It's not just that, but that Jesus fulfills all prophecies from the Lord because he is the word of the Lord. He is the fulfiller of prophecies. Therefore, the spirit of prophecy is his testimony. So let's just sum up everything for you guys real quick. The spirit of prophecy isn't dead. It's alive and well. It wasn't just for a time and then removed. It's operating here and now. The spirit of the Lord has been poured out on all flesh. And this is the reason why anyone who calls on the name of the Lord can and will be saved. The spirit of prophecy is still in the world today and is still working in many Christians in the church today. The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus, not because it was on the earth during the time Jesus physically dwelt with mankind, but because all prophecies from the Lord are brought and fulfilled through the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is is Jesus. All prophecies from the Lord came from, point to, and are fulfilled by Jesus himself. I hope this answered any questions that you may have had about the spirit of prophecy and that you enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy this video, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.